Hi, my name is Bori, and in this video we will solve an integral problem that can be found in one of the step-by-step -step calculus practice problem sets. If you haven't tried this problem before viewing this video, I suggest that you pause this video now and take a crack at it. You can find the problem by following the link found in the description below. Now that you had a moment to try it out, let's start with part A. The first integral can be interpreted as the area of the function 1 plus 2x. If we were to graph this, we would get a trapezoid with the width of 2 and the height steadily increasing from 3 to 7. Or we could solve it using the integral properties of linearity. That is, we can split the function up to two separate integrals going from 1 to 3 and adding the areas afterwards. So the first step we would need to do is calculate the integral of 1 dx going from 1 to 3. Now we can see that we have a rectangle with the width of 2 and the height of 1. And the area of the re this rectangle would be the width times the height, which would give us an area of 2. The second step would be to calculate the integral of x dx going from 1 to 3. Now again, we could take the width times the height, but the height is constantly changing. So we could take the average height. In this case, we would take the start point and the end point and add them together, then divide it by two. So in this case, we have a width of two and the average height of two, which gives us an area of four. Now remember, this is two times this integral so we could simply take the answer that we had previously, which was 4, and multiply it by 2. Putting it all together, we can calculate the integral of the whole function by adding the integral that we calculated of 1 dx plus 2 times the integral of x dx over the range of 1 to 3 and we just simply add the two parts together, in which case we get 10. Let's move on to part B. In part B, we have the integral of one plus the square root of nine minus x squared dx, going from negative three to zero. Again, we could use the properties of linearity and split it with the integral of one dx and the integral of the square root of 9 minus x squared dx. We can remember from part a, the integral of 1 dx is just the width times the height of 1. So this time we have a width of 3 and a height of 1, which gives us the area of 3. The second part is the square root of 9 minus x squared. This should ring alarm bells of a circle. Now remember, with a circle, in terms of a function, there could only be one y value for each x value. And in this case, it would be the positive value. So we have a circle with the radius of 3 but it's only a quarter of a circle because it is from negative three to zero, not negative three to three, in which case it would be half a circle. So if we remember the area of a circle, it is pi times r squared. And since we're having only a quarter of a circle, we could divide it by four. So we just plug in the radius of three and we have 3 squared, which is 9 pi over 4. Again, with the property of linearity, we can just add, simply add the two parts together, in which case we have an area of 3 plus 9 pi over 4. Okay. Let's move on to part C. In this integral, we have constants a and b and an absolute value of x. Don't let that worry you. 
We will work through this. Like the two other parts, we could split this based on the properties of linearity. So we have a times the integral from negative 1 to 1 of 1 dx plus b times the integral of negative 1 to 1 of the absolute value of dx. <clears throat> if we can remember from the two other parts, 1 dx is just a rectangle of height 1. Now the width is 2 because it goes from negative 1 to 1. So we calculate the area by timesing the width and the height, and we have an area of 2 units. <clears throat> the integral of negative or absolute value of dx is an even function. What that means is for every negative value of x, the positive value of x is the same. So what we can do is take the integral from 0 to 1 and multiply that by 2. So we have 2 times the width times the average height of the integral from 0 to 1. In this case, the width would be 1 and the height would be 1 over 2 because it starts from the starting point 0 and the end point is 1. So if you add them together, we have 1 divided by 2, so that's 1 half. And if we times that by 2, we have a combined area of 1. And simply, when we add them together, we just multiply them with their constants. So we have a times 2 plus b times 1. So what we have is the total area is 2a plus b. Thank you for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye.